Hello, I'm Wes Timmons, a former National Director of Runway Safety for the Federal Aviation Administration, more commonly called the FAA. I'm going to chat with you about safety management systems, SMSs, and especially safety risk management, SRM. While at the FAA, I was the manager responsible for writing the first order requiring all FAA offices to have a formal safety risk management process and to document all high impact, high consequence decisions. I was also the responsible executive for drafting Aviation Safety's Safety Management System Policy, which was later adopted as the FAA's Safety Management System Policy. I was also responsible for regulatory oversight of the formulation and implementation of the SMS for the Air Traffic Control Organization. As you can probably tell, I've been working in safety for quite a while. I have also been working with the University Design Competition for addressing airport needs since 2009. I can tell you I've seen some top-notch submissions, but one area that consistently gives submitters problems is the requirement for a safety risk assessment. I'm going to discuss this critical requirement to provide insight into what the evaluation team is looking for and how to achieve the maximum points for your design submission. Let's start with a high-level overview of safety management systems. All airports are required to develop and implement a safety management system. First, what is an SMS? An SMS is a formal, top-down, organization-wide approach to managing safety risk and assuring the effectiveness of safety risk controls. It includes systematic procedures, practices, and policies for the management of safety risk. In simple terms, it's all of the things an organization does to manage safety. It's not unlike a quality management system or QMS. QMSs were initially developed last century by manufacturers so they could ensure the reliable and predictable quality of products they were producing. So again, in simple terms, it is all the things a manufacturer does to manage the quality of their product. And we have applied those proven principles and techniques to manage safety within an organization. Now, let's make sure we understand our target. What is safety? According to the Cambridge English Dictionary, safety is a state in which or a place where you are safe and not in danger or at risk. If you can reduce the risk of a situation, then you are increasing the safety. In the simplest terms, safety is the absence of risk. So there are four key components of a safety management system. First is safety policy, which is management's commitment to continually improve safety. It's the allocation of appropriate resources and defines the organizational structure to accomplish safety improvement. Second is safety risk management, which is the process of identifying hazards, conducting the risk assessment and risk analysis, and treating the risk to achieve the lowest practicable level of risk. Lowest practicable level, not lowest possible level of risk. If it costs one dollar to prevent one accident, this is a no-brainer. But what if it costs one million dollars to prevent that accident? What if it costs one trillion dollars to prevent that one accident? I think you can see the difference between what is feasible and what is not. Third is safety assurance, which is monitoring the risk to ensure the risk controls are effective, that they are still required, and that they're not causing a new risk or unintended consequence. Imagine putting in cameras to stop drivers from running red lights. Data says it's effective, but it also suggests that drivers may be stopping very abruptly to prevent running the red light, causing more rear-end collisions at the intersection, an unintended consequence. And fourth is safety promotion, which is the process of creating a positive safety culture within an organization. A positive safety culture is one in which everyone is responsible for safety and anyone can report a safety issue without fear of negative treatment or reprisals. People who make mistakes can report their errors without fear of immediately being disciplined or fired. So that's an overview of SMS, but the heart of every safety management system is the safety risk management component. The safety risk management is a formal process 
within the SMS composed of describing a system, identifying the hazards, analyzing the risk, assessing the risk, and then controlling the risk. In simple terms, ask yourself the following questions about your submissions. What can go wrong? How likely is it to go wrong? If it does go wrong, how bad will it be? And what can I do to reduce either the likelihood or severity if it does go wrong? When you identify a risk that you must control, there are four things you can do. Think team. You can transfer the risk. You can eliminate the risk. You can accept the risk or you can mitigate the risk. Most of these are straightforward, but let me give you one example of transferring risk. Air traffic controllers are responsible for maintaining separation between aircraft. It is very common in good weather for a controller to ask the pilot of plane number two if they see plane number one. When the pilot of plane number two responds in the affirmative, the controller will often say, maintain visual separation with plane number one, you are cleared to land. The controller has now transferred the risk of losing required separation from the controllers to the pilots. So that's an example of transferring risk. Let's look at a quick example of safety risk analysis and use one of the SRM tools, the SRM matrix. I know not everyone watching is a pilot, mechanic, airport operator, or air traffic controller. So the system I'm going to use for this example is something familiar to almost everyone, driving an automobile. We've defined the system. Next, you would make a list of hazards, everything that could happen that would cause a safety risk. Then you would analyze each hazard in terms of likelihood and severity. Then you would control each risk to the lowest practicable level, and it has to be an acceptable level. So please note, you cannot accept a high risk. You must control all risk to an acceptable level. You could use a risk matrix to actually plot each risk and the risk controls. So for my example, I'm going to select one hazard using a cell phone while driving. Statistics already show the number and severity of accidents caused by distracted driving, and the use of cell phones while driving is one of the major distractions. I will rate this hazard as having a high likelihood of occurrence with very serious consequences. Since this results in a high risk, I cannot accept it. So I must provide a means to reduce either the likelihood or the severity of the hazard. Transferring the risk is not an option in this situation. First, I'm going to take credit for things the automotive industry are required to do to reduce the severity of accidents, mainly the installation of seat belts and airbags and the corresponding traffic regulations requiring the use of seat belts. Neither of these items will prevent the likelihood of an accident, but they are proven to reduce the severity of the accident. But unfortunately, this still leaves me with a high risk. Next, I will require the installation of Bluetooth or other hands-free technology. Now the use of the cell phone will free the driver from looking down and manipulating the phone. With more of the driver's attention now devoted to driving the car and looking outside the vehicle for potential danger, we can reduce the likelihood of an accident and since the driver has more time to see and avoid the accident, the outcome should be less severe. The risk is now in a range where it could be accepted, but we are still required to reduce the risk to the lowest practicable level. Finally, I will require the installation of a cell phone disabling technology to virtually eliminate the risk. The technology would be similar to that used on GPS systems to limit the functionality of the unit when the car is moving. Accepting that there is a remote possibility that the technology may fail, I have successfully re reduced the likelihood to the lowest level and any resulting accident would have minor consequences. So when you are proposing a design utilizing drones, start asking the questions. What if I have frequency interference? What if my signal is jammed? What if I lose control of the drone and it starts flying toward the airport's protected airspace? Do I have geofencing capability? 
Can I deploy an auto land system if a problem is detected, etc. In summary, safety risk management is a process of predicting what might go wrong and fixing it before you actually experience an unsafe situation. Finally, the design competition provides several references. Take the time to look at them and to get a better understanding of this required portion of a design competition submission. Thanks, have a great day, and be safe.